Hi, everyone. It's Susan here. Well, we're going live. Thank you very much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure to have all of you here. And we're continuing our discussion on bad behavior. Why? Because a lot of you write to me and a lot of you send your video requests for me to discuss why do they do what they do. So we'll not only discuss why people do what they do on this platform, we'll also discuss how you can avoid running into these problems. Remember now, people are indirect in this dating world because they do not have other skills. The ability to be honest and forthright, that seems to elude them. Now, all of you that come on here, you guys are great. Hi, everyone. Hi, Thomas, Sally, Amanda, Connell. How are you? Um, Alex Flips, I know you well. Um, you guys, um, Reham, how are you doing? Uh, Pantelis, uh, hi to everyone. I know we have an international audience. I'm so grateful when you guys take a moment out of your day to join me. Uh, Danny, Irene, Micheline, uh, Susie Cusey, uh, Rima, Rita. Hi, everyone. Uh, if I've missed your name, just know that I really appreciate having you here. I love my audience. You guys are bright and you're in your integrity. We are trying to learn how to get you what you want in the most ethical way possible. Remember, we also have Super Chat available. So if you have a question that you want me to read, so Susie can see it with all this stuff flying by, you'll, it'll be in a big box. If I don't get to it by the end of the show, because sometimes they come in wildly, then I will address it. The minute this goes live, you'll see it in large caps that I will address this. So thank you all of you today. Today, we are talking about catfishing and its little sister, kitten fishing, which I didn't know what this was, but it is simply the edification of who you are as how you represent yourself online. So this, hi, Laura, how are you doing? Hi, Kimberly. All this was a much greater problem when we didn't have video dating. These are terms that we use for video dating where you are being catfished. Now, most everybody has heard the term now, how sad, but it's true. And um, so I'm thinking of Nib Shulman, the guy who started the show Catfish, because he was catfished. He had an online love affair with somebody he'd never met in person, thought this was a really great person, and um, comes to find out that they are not as they represented themselves to be. And brilliantly, did a whole show around this and still unites people with these long-standing love affairs that they believe they have. Now, I know you're going to say to me, why do people catfish? I think the underlying reason is that they believe that who they are, you would never want them. Oftentimes you'll find that somebody who's been catfished is catfished by a friend or somebody that they know in their community that knows they walk by them every day and they never get noticed. So they become some other personality and can feel what it's like to be adored, can feel what it's like to court someone and to seduce them through words and through dreams. They give you dreams. Now, anyone who's online, and I think most everybody knows this, but um, I know that I have a wide span of ages um, I have like 18 all the way up to people. I think the oldest client I've ever had was 72. So for some of the generations, if you're new to dating and you haven't been online, if you don't understand how it goes, just assume that things are not exactly as they are represented. Um, you need to jump immediately to meeting the person or putting them into a video chat it is very important that you actually see who you're talking to. This is why I really like the advent of using video dating, especially now, this is being recorded during coronavirus, and especially now it's really useful because you can actually meet and get a feeling because you know there's a lot of vibe you get by chit-chatting, and then oftentimes people will speak on the phone. I know even my friends that are very young, that's like, oh, I hate doing phone. I don't do that. But you can feel the warmth in the voice. So a really superior way of dating would be to get into a video dating. In a way, I'm video dating all of you guys because I'm able, I can't reach out and touch you. But imagine if you and I could have a two-way conversation and I'm looking at you and we can talk. It's really, really valuable. So I urge you when you can either jump to meeting the person 
in real life as soon as possible or get them into some kind of video chat. Now, what is kitten phishing? Kitten phishing is a fairly new term and that was coined recently by journalists. You know, the, I think journalists walk around each week and say, okay, I saw this bad behavior. What's a new word that we can use for it? Um, so uh, kitten phishing is misrepresenting yourself a little bit. So, you know, if you're, I don't know, a temp, maybe you work at the company, if you were one of the tech guys that did something on an app, short time independent contractor, maybe you align this famous app with your name and, oh my God, did he develop it? Or, oh, he was one of the principals in that founding company. So it's oftentimes done through filters because so much is mobile now. And um, honestly, you guys, filters have really helped me. I have lighting on because it really assists me. But, um, you know, filters can... Take, I mean, there are filters, okay, you guys know this, but there are filters that can give somebody abs that they don't have. You can adjust the shape of your body. I had a, um, a social media director who would literally take her waist and make it look 18 inches small, and she was a large girl. She was, you know, there was nothing under 36, 38 inches, and she would make herself look like this. So, we know that if you do Instagram, you know how people doctor their photos. So this misrepresentation, all this stuff that you get comes from the fact that the person you're working with is insecure. One, are they too good to be true? Do you sense that? If that's what you're feeling and you think they're too good to be true, they may just be too good to be true. Two, if you really wanna know, you know, you can check them out. If you get a name for them, Google search them, reverse search their telephone number, reverse search their image. That is really helpful. Check with their company, look on LinkedIn. Do they actually work there? What position do they have? So we have to understand that, you know, this medium is amazing. It connects me with people here. We've got somebody coffee and chit chat with Karen and Harriet here all the way in the UK. And I've got all these people here that from all over the world, and oh, thank you, somebody who likes my lip color, thank you. But you know, I would never be able to do this in another time period. This wouldn't have been done mid-century. We couldn't have done this, you know, back in the other century. So this is what I really, really love about this. Um, this is the upside. And the downside is that we have trolls, we have fraudulent people, we have people misrepresenting themselves. Now, I do understand that dating is much harder than it ever was before. And I know that you guys are in a quandary. Hey, this is my first um, sticker. Uh, Frogazin button up. $3. Thank you so much. Stickers are just something where you can just pop up and say hi. Oh, my hero. This is so sweet. Thank you so much. I hope I'm saying your name right, you guys. <laughs> this is so lovely. Um, I do want this to be interactive. So I am, I think you all know this situation. If there's something you want to ask me about this topic, let's try and stay on this topic for about another five or 10 minutes. Then I'll open it up to whatever you want to talk about. And if you really want me to see it, put it in the super chat so I can't possibly miss it because I'm actually here to help you guys. Now, people have been changing who they are for years through lying. I think I've told you in numerous videos that I had this girl that I knew who um, she was telling me about her incredible career in Hollywood. And I saw these trailers, but it never, I just, I wasn't thinking in a suspicious manner. So I wasn't like, oh, I didn't notice she didn't say anything. I just saw these things and you saw posters of her. I had no idea. So, um, it was funny when she was reading books to encourage herself to leave her career. Hi, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, hi. Uh, Frog is on button up. Hi, hi, how are you? Um, so she was trying to leave Hollywood. She'd never had a speaking role. She was an extra. Oh my God. It's like this whole thing had gone for ages. I think I've told you other guys about, I knew this girl who told me she was uh, a, a runner up in the Miss America pageant. And don't you know, this was the whole story. And we, I ended up sitting at some kind of networking event next to a woman 
who knew everything. She was with the pageant. She was like one of the heads of the pageant. I, first time I saw her, last time I saw her. She knew every contestant, every runner up, every state contest, every, and I told her, and she goes, I've never heard that name in my life. So the truth is better. First of all, if you meet somebody that is misrepresenting themselves, most of you are smart enough. You're not going to be catfished. Chances are very good that you are instead going to be, um, that you're going to be kitten fished. So let's look and make sure that you are actually knowing who you're talking to. Try to get them on the phone. Try to do a video chat with them. Try to see what's really up. I love these little um, special highs that I've got going on here. Okay, Amanda, I'm going to go right to your note. Thank you so much. What's up with these people because they will get found out or do they think they can keep this cover up forever? You know, it's of the moment. For the moment, they get the hit. For a moment. Think about it, Amanda. Some of these people that have catfished you. Okay, great. I'm sorry to call somebody up. There is, I'm not going to say their name. There is an athletic dating site where you have to be in shape and you're a committed athlete. The people they show you as the example of who's online, none of those people are online. None of them. They may have joined once. They got swept up. Somebody got them because my friend joined and was looking for the same people and they're not even there. So advertising for dating sites do this too. Like I get these like, do they really think I'm interested in adult men? I mean, I get these pictures of these good looking gray haired guys in their like 60s. I'm like, why do I get this on my, you know, comes through like spam. And I'm thinking, why do you think I want that? But, you know, those guys are not available. Those guys are actors. They're print models. They've been, this is, it's not like you're going to go, oh, I like this guy's look. I bet he lives in Austin, Texas with me. No. He doesn't. He's a print model that was hired for the day. So it's a temporary hit. People for a moment get to feel in the safety of their home that they have someone's attention like yours, Amanda. They got you to respond. They're looking at your pictures. They're looking at your profile. You would have been out of the realm of possibility. So like most impulsive behaviors driven by insecurity, it, there's not a lot of forethought like, oh, and then what's the outcome of this? I can't hold, I can't sustain this, right? Okay, coffee and chit chat with Karen and Harriet. Maybe, maybe I'm talking to two of you. I was catfished several times after coming out of, a, oh my goodness, out of coming out of a 20 year marriage when I was about 40. So I was naive and I let it drag on weeks before I realized, of course, this is what I'm saying. People that are new to online dating. Now you guys, slightly different angle. I've had a number of virgins that I've worked with. Yes, some are older. I actually worked with a 20 year old female virgin. I've also worked with men and women that are still virgins and naive sexually, naive to dating. Most of them were very much focused on getting a PhD or because of their cultural background, they were waiting. It wasn't, we in America tend to think it's a religious choice and no, it wasn't. But this is what's very interesting is that you can enter the dating world and now online dating is of course an an aspect of how we date and have little or no information and be quite susceptible to being conned and used. Okay, Thomas Sally, my dear client, here he's right, oh my goodness, thank you so much, 1,000, huff. Okay, um, I believe we all put ourselves on our best in the beginning, maybe a bit even more, yes, we all kind of tend to kitten fish then. Yes, of course, the first dates we try, we make an effort. And, um, but I don't think, I know you personally, I don't think you'd change your career title. I don't think you'd pretend that you had a position that you don't. It's, there's a difference between putting one's best foot forward and presenting a, a misrepresented version of yourself. So we all want to look good you know, somebody may be vague and leave it open, like, oh, yes, I've been in Hollywood, or yes, I do a bit, a bit of this and that. When I hear people being vague on what they do, 
that means to me, okay, you don't do anything. <laughs> Two, oh, oh, you could be incredibly wealthy and think that if I find out, I'm going to want you because of that, but it's not. Uh, but that's really rarely the case. Um, or, you know, you do something covert that you don't want me to know about. I, I mean, I always, like, I don't understand why we just can't be truthful. It's so much easier. You guys, it's really hard to be honest. I had a client yesterday. She was a young gal. And I realized as she kept going through her story, this woman is terrified of being honest. Being honest makes her feel embarrassed. She feels embarrassed for liking someone. She feels embarrassed for having feelings. So when we feel embarrassed to be ourselves, guess what we do? We start game playing. We start game playing. She would push away the very guy that liked her. And I'm like, why did you do that? That was so terrible. And I didn't mean to beat her up, but I was I was so confused. And I realized that when we don't have a skill set and the confidence to speak honestly, make it simple for your partner. Make it simple. That you know, I I don't think it's attractive nowadays to be mysterious. Mysterious is ultimately confusing and you're grasping at straws and you don't know what you have. Okay. Our, uh, our Alicia says, my guy misrepresented everything, even his name. I found out everything. Yeah, we always do find out, don't we? And if they're vague, I ask them, um, can you be more specific? Amanda Connell, great answer. That's fabulous. Ronnie, uh, sounds like this girl was uh, retracting from her own honesty. He, um, yeah, she was too young and too, she'd never had a relationship. She'd had sex, didn't have a relationship. That's not uncommon in Gen Z or young millennials. It's not uncommon. Um, there are people, that, you know, I feel lucky. I know what it's like for people to court me. My poor father, oh my God, how many marriage proposals did he have to fend off? I mean, he just got to the point that, you know, in a time period where that was what people do, you know, men dated you for the purpose of getting into a relationship and were always hopeful that you'd marry them. And that for me was not a personal goal. I wanted intimacy. I wanted to live with people, but that was kind of like, you know, it was hard to explain in that time period. I just didn't, for me personally, I felt like I don't want to pay to get into this thing and then have to beg a person to let me out and then pay a lawyer to get out of it. I just never wanted that. Loving, committed relationships, absolutely. So this, my perspective is, I was surprised when I first started dating and I realized, oh my gosh, this guy who uh, keeps hitting on me, he's, I, he's already dating three or four other women. This came to as a shock to me in the early 2000s. And I think it came as a shock to a lot of people. Now it is considered common. So we have to be smart. We have to focus. We have to filter. We have to ask questions. We have to be honest. Okay, Sasha M. Um, girl I met text calls a lot like a pre, pre, like a pen pal ship met several times, but lately not wanting to meet up. Wants to be friends. Okay, that's no good. Okay, yet flirts and expresses her jealousy if I'm with another girl, even a friend. Okay, okay, so maybe, Sasha, um, are you guys young, early 20s? Are you a teenager? So here's the thing. There are people who do not have the skill set and don't know. But if somebody says they want to be friends, that always makes me worry. Why do you need to tell me that? You've just boxed me in. Why would they tell you that? So here's where you call it up. If the girl is acting weird, Sasha, and gets a reaction to you being with somebody, you say, this is really strange. You say you want to be friends. Now, the question is, what do you want? Do you want more? Then you speak very honestly for both of you. I actually like you as more than a friend. I'd like to know you as more as a friend. You've given me friend. That's all you've given me. If you have more to offer, let me know. Otherwise, you're going to be my friend, and I'm going to hang with other girls. So that's it. I mean, it's got to be that simple because only because nowadays it is so confusing. Do not underestimate the level of confusion and, and assumptions that are being made. When you play game, 
massive assumptions are made on the part of the other person. And if you start reacting in game and editing yourself, they're going to edit themselves back. This is what happens. I'm, I'm thinking back of this girl. She wasn't in a relationship with a guy. He wanted to be in a relationship with her. He, uh, he really likes her. He's been quite persistent on this because she didn't know what a relationship was. She didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable by like reaching out or being too obvious in her liking of him. So because she never gave him a green light, he felt perhaps that he started to retract. And as he started to retract and not call so much, then she wasn't going to call him. Then when he finally did, she'd wait three or four days to respond back because she was miffed. All this never needed to happen. It's because nobody was just being themselves and moving in a straightforward way. You guys, it's really hard to know our own truth. And when you know it, it's really challenging to say it to another person. You think it feels vulnerable. People like my client get embarrassed. Don't have to be embarrassed. It is what it is. It's like the sky is blue, the grass is green. I like you. Like to see what's going on here. Oh, you don't want that? Okay, cool. Got it, got it. Okay, let me see what else is going on here, you guys. You've got some great comments. Uh, Reham, Ahmed, why when telling a guy up front that you like him scares them away? How soon is too soon to tell someone you like them? Okay, Alex Flip, I want you to listen to this one too. Um, you can't just say, I like you out of the blue. I did a special video on this and some guys were writing back going, I walked up to the girl I saw in the store and I told her I liked her and she walked away. It, your system doesn't work. It's like, no, dude, you got to add to the bank. People are like a bank. You have to keep adding to the account before you try and take away. This is why talking to them, establishing rapport, you can't just walk up to somebody you hardly know and say, I like you. It only works if you are in an ongoing communication with them. You're close enough to them that you've shared some things. You've done some things socially. They're in your social group. You could, and, and you don't have to say it in a sexual tone that scares them. Instead of going like, I like you. You don't have to do it like that. You go, you know, I really like you. You're cool. You want to get together for a cup of coffee sometime? See how that's so much easier? But it, again, you have to, I believe in volley. You have to start a conversation, build it, listen to what they say, come back next time you see them and build upon that. Um, I have a client who's... Uh, the person that they were interested in, Alex, uh, was into I don't know, ge geology or something. I said, go read up on it. Come back with a comment, right? So you, these are things that you could say, you know, it prompted me. I, I heard you are studying this. This is really cool. Um, I, I read this article. So now you have a point of conversation. So you, you can't just start from nothing. So ladies will bear me out in this. Most of the guys that walk across a room and try and chat up a woman, if, you're, if your energy is very sexual and you're demanding to get her digits, ASAP, and your whole walk over there is, I'm cornered, nine times out of 10, the woman will automatically shut you down. She'll shut you down because you scare her, because you, don't, you haven't established any kind of uh, groundwork for just coming up to her other than, I want you... So it's got to be sexual. So it puts us under a lot of pressure. If she's with a group of women, she may really shoot you down. You don't want that to have to happen. If you're doing anything where people keep shutting you down, the man shuts you down, the woman shuts you down, stop doing it. Okay, you don't want to practice a failed, uh, whatever you're doing there is failing. So you don't practice that. You go back to the drawing board and start all over again. So let me read what else you guys have to say. Uh, Layla L., there was someone at work who evidently liked me. Okay, good. I was into him too. We went for drinks. I told him, I know he likes me and I am reciprocating. That's kind of, okay. It, if, okay, you never say that. He got so defensive and withdrawn like it was a weakness. Of course, don't out him. <sighs> I had a date with this young boy. I should have never done it. Okay. And he writes me. So I heard you like me. I was pissed off the minute I got that. I'm like, I didn't say I liked him. 
somebody said he was interested in me. And I said, okay, cool. I'll be happy to see him. I'll go out to have a coffee or something. But it, you can't do that. Language phrasing is everything. Communication, how you say it. You don't just go out with somebody and say, hey, yeah, I know you like me, so I like you too. Even if they do, they're too exposed. Remember, people are exceedingly cautious nowadays. People are not comfortable being direct and being open. So you'd, I would have rather you eased yourself into that instead and said something about them that's true. Um, I think you said you know them at work. Let me go back and read this again. Okay, somebody at work. I would have rather you go out with them. Layla chatted them up at work, uh, chatted them up uh, personally, said something like, I really like the way you handled that project. I always see you come in on time. You always have a smile on your face. I think that's so cool. You're so nice to people. I've always enjoyed that about you. It makes me feel, you know, it makes me very um, interested in getting to know you better. So the reason this person got defensive with you, Layla, was because you outed them, okay? So what do we have here? Okay, five pounds from PRMD. Thank you so much in the super chat. You guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for these donations. I appreciate it. Hi, Susan. I'm not sure if you saw my super chat above. Perhaps I did not. Where is this? Oh, I did not. Thank you so much. Okay, 10, okay, 10 pounds. Again, I, I try and go through all of these and, and remember if I've said them, yes. Okay. Hi, Susan. What would you do? when you feel jealous, envious of a friend who keeps boasting about all these good looking guys being into her while feeling like you're not good enough for the same. Okay, two parts here. All right, one, your friend is not that confident or they wouldn't need to keep boasting about all these people that are into them. So perhaps all these guys that are into your friend want to sleep with him or her, that's it. I don't know what PR, PRMD, I don't know what that means. So your friend desperately needs you and everyone else to think that she is, she or he is like really, really popular with the guys. Just because they want you sexually, just because they want to get laid doesn't mean they like you. That's an entirely different animal. So understand that this person is doing something. And if this is a close friend, and they know that you're struggling being single, you better reevaluate that friendship, okay? Now, your friend is saying, it's hearsay, okay? Have any of these people shown up? PRMD, do you see any of these guys on the arm of your friend? Do they take them to social events? Are they partners? Are they boyfriends? Um, if that's not happening, this is just up, 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 right? So, but this feeling that you're not good enough for the same, uh, you know, you've got to ask yourself, what bait is your friend putting out there? I mean, Instagram is like, people don't need porn magazines anymore. I mean, you just go through Instagram, you know, people are throwing out everything to get people's attention. You don't know what the side sidelined chats are. You don't know what's being messaged. You don't know what's being promised to have all this attention. The real test of attention, the real test of attraction, the real test of, of you know, being desirable is who loves you. Who loves you? Who's going to be there for you? Right? That's, the, that's what we have to look at. So being... Listen, we've all got those beautiful friends that get all the attention. I knew this woman. She was a soap actress, uh, a friend of a friend, and she was like on an outer circle. I didn't know her that well. It didn't matter who was there. didn't matter what shape I was in. didn't matter who I was, how famous I was. None of that mattered. They saw her because she was a soap star. Guys went right to her like moths to a flame. She was beautiful and a classic beauty. You just get used to that. Maybe your friend is exceedingly attractive, but your friend is also insecure. And in a way, you're a little bit more uh, courageous because you can admit your insecurity. Look, it, we're all insecure. I'm insecure. My friends are insecure. We all have an area that we are insecure about. We all have areas in which we don't feel. You can't be excellent in everything. You just can't. So let's figure out what you're good at and let's try to 
disconnect the belief that because my friend is getting all this attention and boasting because he or she is so desirous, uh, let's play that through and check the merit of that that thinking because are these people showing up as people that really want a serious relationship and truly love this person? If not, it's all a bunch of chatter. The people that I've known that make sure that everybody knows how desirous they are, are always talking about who's into them, how many people want them. And they're always without a partner, wishing they had one on the carousel, going on the carousel, the dates and getting dumped by the wayside. So strive to be a person that you enjoy, that you are proud of, and forget what your friends are doing. You can't, it's not a comparison thing here. If you want love, be a person that is loving, be a person that is smart about how they position themselves. You know, you may want to chat me up on Magnify or something like that. Okay, thank you so much for uh, calling attention to the super chat that I didn't see. Um, I hope that answers your question. We have something new here. Let's see, where are you? Okay. Uh, Alex. Okay. So with geology girl, thank you for your five pounds, my darling. I just ignore her now when I see her at work. Okay. I believe honey, in your case, you leapt before you had the foundation from what we've discussed. Again, people need warming up. Um, I think there was one guy that caught me on the street that asked me out. And I turned around and said, yes, because he was so cute. I did. And he was a great date. He, and he loved my dog. Um, we, we went on a full, we went on a, that's when I had a big Samoyed, like the big version of Nika. And we went on a, on a date and I think it lasted six days. It was beautiful. He was actually, but that was during the time that I was dating players. And he turned out to be a wonderful man and uh, gave me probably one of the most expensive gifts I've ever had in my life for my birthday, months after we were no longer a couple. So, um, you know, you just, you never know how you, but you have to establish that thing is rare. So it's going to be very rare that anybody that doesn't have a chance to talk to you and knows you ever says yes to you. Very, very rare, especially if you're trying to chat up a woman. They need to feel safe. They need to have women, gals, bear me out on this. We need to feel a sense of connection. And the very thing, the, the skill set with which men don't really work that much is communication. If a woman feels like she can connect to you, everything else starts to make sense. I think I've told you about my friend who's newly single and beautiful woman, a fitness girl, beautiful, beautiful, and has found herself dating men that are not patently um, physical beauties because of how great they are and how they make her feel. This is something new for her, but they have earned their way into her heart because of the way they speak to her, the way they treat her. So it's not just the language, it's the treatment. And remember, people are an investment. That's why when you find somebody and you choose to make an investment of your time or your energy or your heart, we want to do so wisely and give a little and give a little and start to cultivate this relationship. And I think there's nothing wrong with complimenting a person on qualities that are real and true for them. That resonates far more than, oh my God, you look so hot. I mean, you know, that's nice to hear it is, but I don't think most women... I don't know, ladies, maybe it's just me. I don't think most women really, it's appreciated, but you can't go anywhere with it because it's so one dimensional. Okay, I'm going to continue checking some questions here. If anybody else, uh, let's see what we've got here. Okay, Thomas Sally, thank you so much, my darling. 1000 HUF. Do you think kitten catfishing has connection only with self esteem insecurity, feeling not good, or maturity as well? Very good question. The two are kind of interwoven. Um, remember, being old doesn't mean you're wise, okay? Just because you're older doesn't mean that you're mature. Maturity is a sense of self-acceptance and valid self-appraisal, right? I remember asking my mother once how she got her confidence, and she just snapped back at me, and she said, I'm not the worst. I'm not the best, but I'm not the worst, so I was just like, wow, 
I like, wish I'd gotten more of that. That's great, you know? So I've learned this stuff, you guys, during hard knocks. I didn't have a filter on my love. I've had to learn how to control it. I've had to learn how to control how I focus it. And I've had to learn how to control how I communicate with people and, and especially how I say what I want and what I need. And, and that's a skill in and of itself. You know, you always hear these things like, oh, communication, communication, but it's, it's really, really important. Start with the understanding that most people are going to feel uncomfortable and insecure when they start to like you. And if you doubt it, just look at your own behavior. How easy is it to talk to somebody you couldn't care less about, right? I mean, there's a fine line. Sometimes you don't want to chat up somebody you're not fond of because then they'll get the wrong idea. But if you have no intentions whatsoever, you can just ramble off to these people. But when you start to like them, you start to constrict a little bit or you go into whatever your own default is. Maybe you talk too much. Maybe you talk too little. Maybe you get a little shy. You know, things change when we're attracted to people. So we need to feel, we need to know ourselves Thomas, this applies to this. We need to know ourselves, know our default, know where we go with it and kind of work with what our automatic default is and make sure that we are attuned and adjusted to how do we present ourselves best to get the kind of results we want. I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see, do we have anything else here? Um, okay, I love the fact that you guys are talking to each other. Rochelle is talking to Alex Flips. Um, uh, I got he. I realized exactly that the ones who always say that everyone is in love with them, they are alone and partially broken. Women that have this kind of behavior try also to bring others down. Very good point. So many of these people you think are your friends, they're your frenemies. Okay, Brett Karsten, 199. Thank you, Brett, for super chat. Setting boundaries. How do we get over the guilt? Oh, beautiful question. What? <laughs> you have guilt for protecting yourself? I'm sorry. Uh, setting boundaries is important. That, think of them more as guidelines that are going to help people. Okay, now you guys are all chatting at the same time. Hang on, because I want to get everybody in here. Okay, so let me go back to Brett. This is a great question. Setting boundaries is for everyone's comfort. The reason you set boundaries is so you don't have to dump them, ghost them, leave them, or hurt them. Because when you don't set boundaries and you simply have a reaction, you probably do any one of those things. I'm going to evacuate. I'm going to dump you. When you set boundaries from the very beginning, or at least tell a person what you want, what you like, and what the terms of engagement are, you're giving them an outline as to how to treat you how to treat you so that the best you can come forward. That's what we want. You want to be the best you without editing, without guard, without, you know, being all nervous and neurotic. You're trying to show them, if you treat me this way, you're going to get the best of me. So because you're doing that, my darling, no guilt, no guilt. You're giving them the most vital, precious information on how to handle themselves in the relationship. Exactly what they need to know. Without boundaries, they don't know where you are. They don't know what you want. They don't know how to treat you. This is important and it's essential. Okay, great question. Okay, on to the next. Coffee and chit chat with Karen and Harriet. It sounds like a podcast, you guys. I'm not sure. Maybe it is. 10 pounds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Both Karen, both Harriet. Don't know which one's on here. Okay, I'm 51. I had three dates with a man of 54. He seems enthusiastic about our future and says nice things when we're together and texts, but he hasn't texted all week. I sent one today and no reply. Is this normal? <laughs> oh God, everyone is going to tell you. I have a job that wouldn't have existed 20 years ago. This is normal. I hate to tell you. You guys, the fits and starts that we go through, this is why we have shows like this. Harriet, it's not normal for somebody who knows what they want and they are proceeding toward you. We have to think back. I doubt you did anything horrific. Did you call them a name? Did you make fun of them? Did you say, oh, by the way, yeah, I'm so glad I get a chance to talk to you now because I just had 10 guys over here and we had group sex and now they're gone. So now I have time to talk to you. What, what were you saying your name was? You didn't do that. So 
what happens with these dates? Let's see, you had how many? Uh, three dates. So in-person dates. Okay. Understand this. He's dating others. Understand this. He might have seen someone over the weekend. Like if you saw him on a Thursday or Friday, he could have had somebody lined up for Saturday, went into Sunday, and he's exploring that. Um, quite sadly, unlike when I first started dating and somebody zoned in on you for the purpose of focusing on you, there has been a tendency in the last 20 years for people to date multiple people. They don't make a selection up front and go and chase it down, examine it, and then go, okay, not for me, and on to the next. They play with several people, so they're constantly eating from the buffet table. Um, if you don't think you did anything wrong, you did the right thing, you waited an ample amount of time, you sent a text, you did your best. You don't hear from them, it's unfortunate. I know you're left unresolved. If you feel like saying something next week, you might want to write something where you close it and say, I'm sorry, Don, that this didn't work out. I did enjoy our couple of dates, wishing you well. So even though you know they've dropped you, sometimes the thing to do is to call it just so that you get it out of your system. And at least then everybody knows it's over. I hope that helps you. Are you guys having coffee and we're chit-chatting with Karen and Harriet today? Um, let me see. I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, let's see you guys, Brett. You guys are having this whole thing in between yourselves. Okay, AK, uh, let's see, A, $5. Okay, how should one contend with feelings of aloneness in being alone? Never been lucky in love. Okay, I'd love to work with you personally, AK. I don't know, we, we have to look, to, we have to take a look at the structure of a lot of things. One, are you in an environment where you're able to meet people? Two, do you ever go online? I mean, given the fact that we talk about all this horrible behavior, we also have to understand, do you have an adequate supply of people that you could meet? When you meet them, are you socially awkward or are you able to express yourself? If you're able to express yourself, are you able to engage people in a conversation? But maybe we need to back up and say, do you know what you want? What are, there, what are the factors that are contributing to this? Why do you think it stopped? Did you ever have a relationship? Some people say they're unlucky in love and they're 23. So there's a lot I don't know. You should kind of take a forensic look at this. And this is what you want to do. You want to examine everything. How's your online profile look? What are the photos like? What are you saying to people? What are your friends telling you? What do your family tell you? What are, what are the known, and, and then you need to get a professional to find the things that you can't see. Sometimes it's a matter of um, re-education. Sometimes it's a matter of fishing in a different pond. And sometimes it's simply a matter of exposure to people who are available. So until we know those things, we really don't know where to go with you. Okay, thank you so much for your super chat. I do appreciate that. I have something else here. Let's see, what is this? Okay, and did I miss something here? Oh, uh, Alba Gill, $9.99. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Susan, I admire you so much. Oh, and I followed you for a while now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, if one is interested in pursuing a career as a relationship coach, where do you recommend to start that is a reliable place? Wow, boy, I'm, I might be the wrong one to ask this, you guys. It kind of fell, it came to me. Um, it's a lot of work. I do it differently. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Do you know how many people I work with to make the money I do? Uh, most other people sell packages or they do digital courses where they never meet you. It's really hard to heal people unless I'm working with them. I can do, you know, books can help, tapes help, obviously. Um, not everybody has a degree. If you want to get a degree, get a degree. If you get a degree and you're a medical professional, you have other things to consider. Uh, liability, you have other considerations. Um, you know, I know people that are simply passionate. There's a guy in um, Australia that wrote me on Instagram. Totally different career. He's in marketing. He wants to help gay men that are first coming out. And it was really cool because I had a client uh, a couple weeks ago, gay man who's just realizing now that he's gay and 
it wasn't until we went into the conversation a little bit further that I've realized that he's never actually been with a man and uh, fully. And he needed a resource and I didn't have one for him and now I do. Sometimes you let your passion guide you. I would say, look, look at what you like. I always think like an end user. I always think, what would I want to get? What do I need to have happen? Listen, get a website. You're probably, I bet you're the one that people go to when your friends have had problems. Are you the one that they've asked advice of for years? I used to be writing people referral letters, like my RA when I lived in a dorm in college. People were always asking me for referrals, and I didn't know I had writing skills at that time. I didn't know I had speaking skills. Um, YouTube has been brilliant for me. To build an audience, I don't do any customer, what do you call it, client acquisition models or whatever. I don't do any of that, you guys. I do the videos. I open up my phone. There are people waiting. I am so blessed and so lucky. But tell them the truth, you know? Tell them the truth of how it is. I. I, I wish I knew what more to say. Look at, look at who does what you like. Think of what works for you. Every, every single coach, every single voice, every artist, every musician, every philosopher has their own audience. We're all different. So we need as many contributions as possible. So speak from, from your heart. Um, having experience is a lot better than coming from theory. If you've been in the trenches, you speak a lot differently. I hope that helps you. Thank you so much for your lovely and generous donation. Let me see. D, I have worked with you before. Yes, hi, D Champon. You've been a great contributor. Thank you so much. My husband of 28 years, physically abusive, 13 years ago, verbally abusive, want to leave but stay for youngest daughter's happiness, afraid to leave. I feel I'm finally ready to live my life. I, I feel lost. Okay. I remember your questions and I think you've had somebody chatting you up that interests you. From what I know of women, uh, the issue about the children and when you time leaving is very important. If you are being physically abused, you need help way beyond me. You need to be with a support system. They will guide you. Abuse, physical violence is no joke. And, um, you know, most people are looking for permission to leave. Uh, I do not know your situation, so this is very tricky for me. I, I encourage you to find your life. I don't know how old your child is. People do stay. My friend, her kids now are in their early 20s. And one day, and I asked her what it was that she would end like a 27 year marriage. What was it? And I know her husband, he's exceedingly difficult, exceedingly difficult. I never, I never knew how she did it all those years. And the, all, the only thing I could think of is she did it for the kids. And indeed she did. And when she saw that they were okay, when she really figured the last thing he did was so, you know, like, just picked her apart and tore her apart at a public restaurant like he did a thousand times throughout the years, thousands of times, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And that day it was just, that was it. You, you know, you never know when you've just had enough, but I can tell you that it is, you know, divorce is very common these days. Most kids barely get through, you know, junior high school, senior high school, without either their parents have separated or their best friend's parents have separated. So, you know, it's becoming a fact of life where we just have to, a, a mom's duty, you know, is to her kids. And you know that. And you will know when the time is right, but I really suggest you seek a medical professional and counseling for this. I can help you with dating concerns. I can help you with some self-esteem, but I don't want to enter territory that's this precious and give you the wrong advice. So thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate that. Let's see, what do we have here? Um, let's see, Reba S, five uh, pounds. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Reba. Hi, Susan. Um, how should you pace yourself when you're excited about dating someone new? 
I start to build a fantasy and attachment too quickly. We all do. We all do. So my best girlfriend started dating this guy and she had been chatting with him. This is the most logical, grounded person ever. She's like, this is it. I met the man I love. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking, oh God. And she goes, we're going to meet this week. I'm like, oh my God. She goes, Susan, I've never connected with a man like this ever, 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 ever. And she went headlong into it. He, he professed his love to her. She professed her love for it. It's, I think now a month and a half. She goes, I'm done. I don't know what happened. So congratulations that you know and you see it. Part of getting into a relationship, you guys, it's not your fault. It's required. We go in and this person inspires our hopes and we start to build the dream. We start to build the fantasy. We tend to rush too quickly. We tend to rush too quickly. And Reba S., you are right on that. Um, you're going to build your fantasies. You can't help that. Watch them. Take a look at them. Slowing the pace the longer you can kind of slow the sexual pace, the more you'll get to know this person. Sometimes for us females, when we sleep with them, we're gone. We attach. And for those of you who are trying to train it out of yourselves, good luck. <laughs> good luck. You know, the most intimate physical act, it's very hard to make it meaningless if you're integrated and you're evolved. It's very hard to do so. So good luck that you see it. Take, take some time. Just take some time if you can, slow the pace down, express express your concern to your partner. Express it like, I really like you. Every part of me wants to jump in ASAP. Like I told my friend, like try not to sleep with him on the first night. She's like, no. She said, Susan, I couldn't stand it. I looked at him. It's like, I just had to. And I'm like, okay, cool. But you know, it's okay. Isn't it great that you found somebody that makes you feel excited? Isn't that a wonderful feeling? That's kind of cool. That's a blessing. Not for nothing. Good for you. So have faith in yourself. Okay, Huff. Hello, Huff. Oh, my goodness. Thomas, Sally, you are so, so sweet. You are so, so good to me. Thank you. Thank you. You're a great client, and you're so generous here. I truly appreciate this. What is your opinion on emotional transference when the feelings are created, transferred to the other person? is the primary need for that 100% presence attention. Wow, okay, so I know transference as far as how people start to feel about their therapist. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I'm hesitant to answer this um, because I'm trying to figure out what you mean when the feelings are created, transferred to the other person. Is the primary need for that is 100% presence attention. I'm not sure if they're programming you. I'm not sure. I don't know enough about this to answer your question. I really wish I could. You know, um, if you chat me up, listen, why don't you write me on Magnify? I'll open up for you and I'll answer privately. Okay. And I'll do that for free. So you, you, I'll, I'll get you to go on to the link. Okay. Cause I really, I want to answer this and I want to make sure I, I'm, I can't tell enough from this. I, I kind of feel like I'm grabbing at straws and trying to guess. I don't want to second guess this. Okay. So you, that's your job. You have to do it. I'll be free this afternoon. So when I get off of here, send me a request. I'll send you a link and we'll chat. Okay, Thomas. I hope, I hope that I, I am committed to answering all of you guys. And I do appreciate this. Let's see. So what do we have here? Um, so I've answered Reba. Is there anybody that I haven't answered that, I love the fact that somebody made me notice this. Okay, we've talked about loneliness. We've talked um, Alba. We've done this. Let's see. Oh, my God. D. Okay. Reba. Thomas. Okay. Thomas is so sophisticated. Some of this stuff I don't know. Okay. Happy life. Hi, Susan. Love your channel. I dumped my ex. He begged to stay, but I couldn't take his lies manipulation anymore. He is now with a new fiance. <laughs> I feel betrayed. He moved on after one month. Help. Oh my goodness. You can't imagine they just met. He lied and he betrayed you. Listen, people don't change in one month. Okay. People that come into AA and have a spiritual awakening. Yes. 
you have to have a spiritual awakening and be reborn and hit your bottom and go like, okay, you know, people have had life altering situations. You dumped him. He suddenly, a month later, he was already seeing this person and you know it. That was probably part of the lying and cheating and let them go off together. Whatever this person is, they are not right for you. So here's something we go into all the time. I thought I was the only one that does it, but we all do it. We belabor leaving somebody and start to second guess ourselves when everything about leaving them was right because we tried, we tried, we tried, we couldn't change it. And then finally we left to save ourselves. We bit our leg out of the leg hole trap just to get away. And we do that. And then we start to put salt in the wound because now we start to wonder, oh my God, but what if he changes? Oh, look at, he made a commitment to her. He wouldn't make a commitment to me. Oh my God, she's going to get all my work. He's going to get everything that I tried to give him. Oh my God, everything that I didn't get, this person's going to get. No, no, they're going to get the person that you had to leave, that has the same default, the same. You guys, do you know how hard it is to change when you want to change? Imagine somebody that just switches partners out of desperation. One, your guy needs a victim. This guy needs a victim, immediately got engaged. Do you know that to be true? And if he is, who would get engaged with the guy in one month? They're both desperate. And then he's not going to stop lying and cheating. So let's say worst case scenario, worst case scenario, they found true love and he's amazing. All you know is that this person was not that way with you. Couldn't, wouldn't, didn't work wrong fit, wrong match, wrong, wrong fit. We can be with a, you know, each one of us brings out a different quality in a person. Somebody can be horrible with somebody else and good with me, but they're still going to have their same issues and they will come into my life. Those same issues will affect me. You don't just change this. You don't leave a person. All this stuff goes bye-bye. No, no, no. You come in with a set. A person who is willing to lie to you is very comfortable lying to the next person. A person who's willing to cheat on you is very comfortable cheating on the next person. These are our inherent traits. They're comfortable with being duplicitous. They're comfortable with that. Wow. And you want that? And you think this person has a bargain? No. So please don't put salt in the wound and tell yourself, he, she's getting everything I didn't get. Oh my God, why isn't it me? Be glad it's not you. Okay. Oh, you guys, this time goes so fast. I can't even believe it. Hi. Okay. Name I can't even begin to say. Chuck, Chuck. Uh, okay. Hi, Susan. I'm feeling heartache, even though I'm still in middle school and never dated. Are those feelings real? Yeah. Yes, I was in love with Scott LeMay <laughs> and spent a whole summer pining over him. Yes, those feelings are real for you, for what you know right now and for where you are right now. They will be measured in time against maturity and different forms of love. Young kids, like a seven-year-old can think he's madly in love with his teacher and feel that way. Um, you're in middle school, so all I can say to you is that we can only feel the feelings we have inside. And you might find that the beginning of feeling affection for people is one-sided. Welcome to dating. <laughs> Welcome to being a grown-up. Sometimes we like people who don't like us back. It doesn't mean that our feelings stop, but you have to realize something that's a little sophisticated for you is that you're, you're the, how can I say this? You guys, you guys know where I'm going with this. And so those of you that understand allowing magnificence and everything I wrote in Breakup Triage, you understand this concept, but the feelings that we hold inside are ours. This person that you see that you like brought something out of you. So you attribute all this magic to them. And the truth is it's your magic. It's your love that you're feeling. You can never, ever, we, we only have access to our depth of feelings. So what I'm trying to say is that not to worry, 
you have sovereignty over this feeling. You get to love whom you want to love and you get to stop loving in that way who you want to stop loving. And heartache, you get to negotiate with heartache. I would negotiate with heartache and say, you know, I'd kind of like to have a rest of a good summer. So could you mind backing off a bit? I'm just, I'm only in middle school. So I'm going to kind of take it with a grain of salt as to what this really is. I like this person. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, it's all right. I'll be okay with that. I hope this helps. Oh, this is so cool. I'm so glad I have a PG channel. Anybody else that, I, okay, wait, let's see. Am I coming back to you? Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Anything else here? Anybody burning desires? Sammy Amir. Thank you, Susan. You are amazing. You are amazing too. Um, okay. Uh, Anas Jara. Hello, Susan. I would like to know if I should give a chance to an ex who is begging me to go back to her after she left and I moved on. My opinion upon this is it depends upon the circumstances. If your ex lied and cheated and hurt you and was really horrible to you, then why would you go back in for a second look? Sometimes a second look, if you are stable enough to emotionally handle it, if they didn't do anything wrong, if it was something minor, like bad timing, she was finishing her degree and couldn't focus on you. She was trying to resolve something with an ex and couldn't give you her full attention. She was scared to be in a relationship. She was overwhelmed with classwork. She was in a new job. It just moved. If it's something kind of external that was of the moment when you two met and then it passed, then it was a question of timing and who she was at the time. If you feel that she's worth a second shot, proceed with caution. But I will warn you, you have something going for you. When we go back a second time, we're never the same. You know, you can't go back and pretend it didn't hurt. And you can't go back to where we were, the person who wrote me, I think it was, was it Reba S? The person who wrote me and, and talks about pace you can't go and build some dream. The dream was built in the first round. When you go back a second time, your eyes are just a little clearer. You see the dark with the light. You don't have a lot of illusions. You've been hurt. You're going to love from a slightly more measured distance. That is an innate gift that we get, unless you're completely like, oh my God, I got myself away from a narcissist and now they're sucking me back in. That's a whole nother story. So again, a second look is for you to reconfirm that what I did the first time is right. And it's only valid if they are not sick, they are not unhealthy, they did not harm you, they were not cruel to you, they were not abusive in any way. Okay. And it was something external that stopped them from getting with you. All right, you guys have been wonderful. Thank you. We didn't have too many problems with kitten fishing and cat fishing today. If you really like this show, I urge you to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you'll get notified each week. And, you know, eventually I'm going to go back to New York. So this time might change. Um, I've been here in the Southwest waiting all this out. So um, you guys will see <laughs> a different, you'll see a gray wall behind me, right? Um, thank you so much for being a part of my YouTube family. If you'd like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can chat me up on Magnify, M-A-G-N-I-F-I. -I. That's a free app and you can charge it by the minute. If you'd like to have a real session, it's 45 minutes. And I don't mean that the other one isn't, but if you want a, a pre-reserved session, go to susanwinter.net. If you want to listen to this, go to the Susan Winter Show if I have missed any super chats, I will come back on. Before I go off, I'm going to answer one more. Uh, Ludmilla writes, $5. Thank you, my dear. Okay, I'll go into overtime for you. Good day, Susan. Thank you for your wisdom and everything you do for us. Oh, you're a wonderful human being. Ludmilla from Staten Island, New York. Staten Island, Ludmilla. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was just a thank you, you guys. I really, I can't do this without you. I want you to be happy and healthy. I want you to get the love you want. I want you to love yourself in the process. We are all works in process. We all have our boo-boos, our concerns, our insecurities, our moments of weakness. 
But more than that, you have great, great resources within yourself and moments of clarity and beauty and power and confidence. We just want to get the the shrouds off you of misperception and get you to radiate in your fullness. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I've missed anybody here in the super chat, I will address it in big cap letters as the first comment that comes up when this page goes live. Thank you. And I'll see you next week. Love to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye now.